In today's video, we are gonna be talking about how to drive a truck with a trailer behind it. My name is Sean, this is DS Trucks, and I am a CDL A driver. I have the highest level CDL, and I hire guys to pull trailers from time to time, so I have to train them. And I wanna make this video to help new guys that work for me pull a trailer. It's not as simple as hook it up and go you got to know how to turn you got to know how to back up you got to know how to do a couple of different things you got to know how to load that trailer now number one before you even get started you want to check everything out make sure everything is super squared away and good to go here you can see our trailer connection is all properly mounted secured you can see that the safety chains are hooked up properly our emergency breakaway is hooked up properly in the correct location it's not damaged our Electrical connections are fully seated. They are not loose, popping out. Our pin is down. Our locking pin is installed. That is required. Very important to make sure it's done correctly. So everything's hooked up good. All our connections are good. Uh, you have to know how to do that. You got you to gotta understand your equipment. Our trailer is a little weird. Whenever it's hot outside, for whatever reason, a little bit of oil gets in our ram and it makes the bed tip a little. Just from being hot, there's expansion for whatever reason. So before I go and get on the road and it's vibrating and making all that noise, I go ahead and let that little bit out. It takes a while for that to happen. Maybe like five or five hours or so of just sitting in the sun and that little bit gets in there and then now it's solid. It's not doing that. Checking our tires. We put an air pressure gauge on these. These inflate to like 115 PSI. These are all properly mounted, secured. All the lug nuts are good. All the tires are inflated. Just going ahead and checking everything. You can also check your lights. Uh, it helps to have a helper to do that. I uh, checked the tires, they're all up. So let's go ahead and get in the truck. I already checked the lights and everything. Let's talk about uh, pulling a trailer using our 2024 Ah. So in the 450, and getting ready to get going here. Seatbelt on, throw the truck and drive, and away we go. So, how to drive with a trailer. You gotta, number one, you gotta know the braking system. Uh, so, in the pickup truck, you have electric brakes, and you can see if those electric brakes can hold the vehicle yes we've confirmed that the electric brakes can hold the vehicle so that's good to know we're set at three right now uh that will change with the load if the loaded if the trailer is loaded we're gonna have to turn that brake up so that it still provides the proper amount of braking that's one of the things that's adjustable in the electric brakes so three is good it's not pushing us or anything it's not pulling us too much uh, a slight pull is okay but you don't need it yanking you back so one of the things one of the biggest mistakes i see right away is the stop signs guys when you have a trailer behind you you're towing you're over that 10,001. you're in a chauffeur's license you have to do things properly that means stopping behind the stop sign because pedestrians could be walking. So if we have a car here on our right to watch out for, and we're good to go. Now, pay attention how we're turning here. We can't just drive normal. This trailer's behind us. So if I make a turn like a normal vehicle, the trailer will end up on the sidewalk and we don't want that. Here we have a hazard to our right where I could slow down and let this other pickup, I mean, I can fit, but I don't wanna be too chance in it. Give this guy some space. I'm not gonna sneak in that little spot. There's another car. So yeah, we're in tow haul mode. Accidentally went a little past that stop sign, but there's no walkway there. So uh, we are uh, in tow haul mode. We have our engine brake turned on. There's a hazard, there's a guy on the mower. So one of the things to, be, to consider is like, you're driving along, you wanna pass that truck up. Well, if you're too close to that truck, someone can walk around the front end, pop out last minute. 
and uh, could get hit. If they're on the mower, they can't see you just yet. They might come out, so you don't want to be getting too close. I mean, that probably goes for any vehicle. If you see like a landscape truck and the gate's down and you get too close to that vehicle and someone's walking around it, you never know. You know, someone could just walk out. So here you have a stop sign with a walkway. We're gonna stop behind the white line. It's important to be doing that in the habit of doing that. Check for pedestrians, no pedestrians. We're good, now we can inch up. Now that we know that no one's freaking coming by with rollerblades and potentially getting hit. Now watch this turn, guys. What we do is we turn late. Turn a little late so the trailer don't get messed up. Now one of the things to also note is you have to turn late in order to get the trailer to clear that curb before you turn. If I turn normal, that sign right there, that one there is getting wiped out and I don't need that. So we have a red light here. We can turn on red, but we have to watch for traffic, stopping behind the white line, making sure there's no pedestrians. We got a green light now and we're gonna turn late. Look at that, we're turning late. Now, what a lot of people do is they make a bell. They shoot the truck out. It's the wrong thing to do. It's, it's called a, I think it's called a bell. They get the truck going this way. They swing left. They, they pop the truck out to the left and the blinker on. Watching for hazard on my left, clear, merging. Our speed limit is going to be 65. Engine sounds great. So what people do is they'll swing the truck out left to make the turn wider. And you're not supposed to do that because traffic coming past you in the left-hand lane, if you're swinging the front end of your truck out, then that traffic could be an issue. You can run into that traffic. So you don't want that to happen. That's not good. You know, you don't want your front end swinging out you want to just turn late and when you turn late then you can clear your curb and avoid that hazard that way but yeah um, if you follow the channel you know this 450 was just in a pretty bad accident uh, someone had pulled out in front of the truck and caused an accident and we ended up getting a new frame installed on this truck but it's crazy the shop did a really good job but the truck literally drives like new it's pretty amazing so we're gonna go ahead and get on the 696 here turn right um let's go ahead and get into our right lane again and get off the freeway because freeway driving is pretty basic there's nothing really to talk about there so we'll get off here and uh yeah i think it'll provide a little more value if we're actually doing turns and things like that there was some illegal dumping all right let's put our right blinker on we want to have a nice controlled st uh, stop we don't want to stop too late we don't want to pass the white lines uh we can turn on red here but a lot of times you don't turn on red depending on the size of the trailer and things like that you just wait till it's green if you have like a say if you're in a semi big 53 foot long trailer then you might just wait until green because the truck needs to swing so wide that it's just not worth making that turn so if you're in a 53 footer you might have to swing all the way near that yellow line there so would you want to make turns on red not really in this truck i can i mean this truck don't need to swing that far out to make the turn but if you're in a semi you dang near be in that center lane and it's just too much of a hazard to uh swing that swing the truck that far into that center lane so yeah Truck pulls good. Speed limit 35. Got to be on the lookout for that. I was going a little fast there for a second. You kind of got to watch the speeds. You know, it's it's so easy to speed, but you want to do the speed limit, especially when you're towing. Got a green light here. We're gonna take it straight. Stale green light. 
So one of the things to watch out for when you're trailering is how long the light has been green. You gotta be really looking out. If the light's been green for a real long time, you might have to anticipate a stop, which means, you know, hey, if it turns yellow on you, you really need to be able to stop the vehicle behind that red light. So if you see red, you just failed the CDL test or potentially got a ticket, you know, depending on the police officer. A lot of times they say, well, you might have saw a little red, but that doesn't count as a uh, ticket because it was no way for you to stop. But if you're taking a CDL road test, if that instructor sees red, you're done. So for me, when I took my CDL road test and all the driving in CDL school, it was tough, you know, learning how to shift the manuals and all that. But running red lights was not an issue because I've been pulling trailers so long. I have a lot of experience driving, but there was a lot of young people in the driving course that you know they're younger they're 20 years old they don't have as many miles under their belt they don't have you know 500,000 miles of driving at all in any vehicle so when it came to red lights those younger kids they really would run red lights quite often they really would and yeah it's an issue you know for younger drivers for me i never even had a problem with red lights and stopping and all that there's a couple times where i really had to hit the brakes no problem i was able to bring the vehicle to a stop but i know we ran some yellows and then we ran a couple red lights with the younger younger people because they just you know it's i'm already pretty accustomed to just watching that light and seeing ahead of time that it's been green for a long time and it's probably going to turn red on me at the last minute uh so Another tip is with the vehicle being so wide, you have to watch out for your lane positioning. And I like and I like to use my mirrors. Like I'm always peeking in my mirrors to get the lane positioning just right. Otherwise, it's easy to drift off to either side of the road and not be centered in the lane just right. So, I'm always peeking at my mirrors when you're doing the CDL stuff. They teach you to like check your mirrors very often and they will be watching your head to uh, make sure your head's actually looking. For me, I use my mirrors as a positioning tool because from where I'm sitting in the truck, it's not that easy to see where I'm at inside of the lane compared to uh, seeing where in my mirror where my rear tires are positioned in regards to the white line or yellow line or curb on my right hand side. Uh, it's much easier to tell. So we have an ambulance. We have to stop for that. He's going straight, so not an issue. Um, UPS truck turning right. There's a semi there. In-ground pool demo. Pretty cool. But yeah. Comment below, what do you guys think about our work truck? It's pretty nice in here. <laughs> All right, waiting for the light to turn. I can't remember if this is a no turn on red, but I don't want to chance it. I am sticking out a little further than I would like. Uh, that white line, when you're in the center, is very important. If you're in the left-hand lane, if you're ahead of that white line like I am, uh, in the, and, you're in, and you're in that lane then a semi if it's big enough it can't make that turn it can't make its left turn and you might have to move but all right waiting for the green will i take it i'm right by the police station so no i can't remember I, this is imagine being in a cdl school and you missed a sign because you gotta when you take the road test you gotta like know every sign all right so here we go we're turning right see how i waited to make my turn turned a little late so i can clear my curb that's how you want to make the turn you don't want the truck front end sticking out into your left lane in order to make your right turn to make your turn wider that's one of the big mistakes people make all right so yeah, I mean, I think I've pretty much covered most of the points. Backing up is for another video because it's its own thing. It's kind of difficult to back up. 
challenge for sure. You know, getting everything set right. But uh, yeah, how to drive with the trailer, you know, pre-trip, you gotta check your trailer. Just because you're not over 26,001 doesn't mean you don't have to do a pre-trip. Yeah, your pre-trip's gonna be less involved. You're not gonna be checking the air brakes and stuff like that, but you still wanna know how to check your hubs. You wanna check the oil in your hubs. You wanna be able to do a visual inspection of your lug nuts. You want to be able to do a air pressure check using a tire pressure gauge to make sure that your tires are properly inflated. You gotta be looking at your trailer throughout the day and making sure everything is still good. If you are just mowing lawns and you pull in an enclosed trailer or a utility trailer, you still wanna get out and look at your wheels throughout the day. And when you get out, look at your wheels and if you see a, a, a bulge, then hey, maybe you have a low tire. I mean, just by looking, you can tell a lot of times, but in the morning, it don't hurt to put a tire pressure gauge on it. Because things happen, you pick up a bolt, pick up something in the tire and big dump trailer, guess what? You get a rear tire flat, you can't dump it, you can't move it. You gotta try to switch out that tire. If you can catch it in advance, that would be the way to go. Uh, so this is how to drive with the trailer. Hopefully this helps somebody in need. But my name is Sean. This is DS Trucks. See you guys in the next video. Over and out.